there's times that where this man has hurt my feelings and i'm like that doesn't feel good but i'm so happy that he came to me and told me and there's vice versa where i know the things that i've said to him don't feel good as a husband or a man but if i don't say it to him then i'm not being completely honest and i don't want a marriage where there's secrets Gang, we are in the building. If you watch this right now, you absolutely should know who we are. And in the off chance that you don't, my name is Swaggy C, my co-host and my beautiful wife, Bailey Amethyst. And we are going to start the podcast off with watching a clip that is going viral on Twitter right now. Last year I turned 40, and these are things that I would not do again in my 20s and 30s. I would not get married. I met my husband when I was 24, and we got married when I was 29. At the time, I thought that this was like the ideal situation. I'm at the perfect age to get married. But what I realized was in the four years that we were married, I grew so much as a person. I graduated from business school, started my own business. I just became such a different person that I didn't feel like he was the best fit for me anymore. And I don't think I could have realized that at 29 when I said yes. If I could do it again, I would have allowed myself to have so much more growth in my life before I made a decision on a life partner. And it's really nothing against that partner specifically, but it was more about the direction that I wanted my life to take. My interests by 35 were unrecognizable to my younger self. And I don't think it would have been fair for me to take him on this journey if I didn't think that he was the right partner for the version of me that was to come. Thoughts, Bailey Amethyst. There's so many things um, that I have to say. I think the first thing is like, uh, and no shade to this woman, but I'm just gonna pick her whole argument apart because first of all, she said, you know, when I got married, I thought that it was the perfect age to get married. That's not why you get married. Number one, sis, you don't get married because this is what you're supposed to do or because it's a perfect age or because by 30, I said I would be married with kids. You get married because you're committed to a person and you love that person because real marriage takes real commitment. And there's some days where I wake up and I'm like, listen, I don't care if I was 35. If I did not love this man, I would not be in this marriage. So to me, she got married to an idea and she wanted her life to be in a going in a perfect direction or doing a certain thing, but she didn't really get married for the right reasons um secondly there's so many things i can say i'm a little like off put with her because and i'll let you share because i know swag has done a little bit more research on this video but i'm off put with her because she did not say this man was abusing her she didn't say that he was manipulating her treating her mean or anything like she said no offense to this partner as if he was just like interchangeable Absolutely. with anybody else and it's like okay so this was just some person to aid you in your growth what about him you didn't mention him at all did he grow is he okay like did he not add anything did he take away like there i it seemed this is a very selfish statement so i think i'm a i just need more info yeah agree i think it's all selfish and like you know even the comments on twitter and from what i was gathering that like first of all when she said i'd done so much growth you know since the time from when i got married to now the only thing she said was I graduated from business school mm -hmm. and I started my own business. Okay, that, that, that's one area. Yeah, you, know yeah, yeah. you didn't say anything else. And the second thing is, there's no context on any like anything the man sacrificed during that time. Maybe he was paying all the bills that allowed you to go to business mm -hmm. school and then graduate and then start your own business and you just threw them to the side. Yeah. Maybe he was paying most of the most of the bills or maybe he was doing all the stuff at home. Making your Even life easier. Even if he wasn't though, what if he was mentally supporting you during this? Business school is hard and he's like encouraging you. Okay, babe, you got it. Don't worry. Another semester. Like there's so many things. Absolutely. He was like, Studying with you. Yeah. Exactly. Like, there was no like information or contribution from that partner that we couldn't even like know. Absolutely. So I think that was hard. The second thing is, I think I'm a little off put too, because it's like, since I am in a marriage, I took that very personally because there's been times in my marriage where I have not felt like I've been growing on the same, you know, scale as you have. And there was not a moment in the marriage where I'm like, okay, he's going to abandon me because I'm not grossing a million dollars a month or whatever, something crazy. Like I felt like you gave me the space to evolve and I gave you the space to evolve. So to me, it just sounded like the foundation was never there and she wasn't really there committed. Like when she said her vows, she was like, yeah, uh-huh. But as long as they... That's what I'm saying. They, it wasn't like, you for know? better or for worse. It was yeah. like to when it's more convenient. Yeah, as long me. as it benefits me, sounds yeah. good. But like she didn't really say like I'm writing for this person. Yeah, and transitioning into, you know, the the world or the modern world or things of that nature. Um, yeah. Like I said before, we're qualified to talk about this. We've been married for four years, together for five. Um, talk about, you know, how people out there should make their marriages work if, if they're going through a tough patch right now or they just want to leave the minute something gets hard. Because yeah. people out there got to understand marriage is not easy. Like, it's very, very hard. There's a lot of things that you got to deal with over, you know, especially for us over the last four years. There's so many changes, mm -hmm. whether it was me individually, her individually. Sorry. 
<laughs> wow. What was that, a bug? That was just a gnat. I don't like that. Okay, yeah. Okay, like I said, so whether sorry. it was me individually, her individually, whether it was uh, finances, whether it was uh, manners, whether it was family, boundaries, there's so many different things that makes the marriage harder because two people aren't going to be in the same alignment the entire time mm-hmm. on every single decision, but they try to meet in the middle and have a balance. And I think you have to always do that to make the marriage work because if you're always trying to figure out how you can be right and uh, um, um, not really be considered the other partner, then it's just, it's just doomed to fail. Yeah, and what was that thing that we learned a long time ago, like when we were marriage counseling? Both people are It was like right. if one of you is arguing to win, then the marriage loses. So there is no mm-hmm. way, there's no win in an argument because if <laughs> he wins over me, then I'm not happy. So there is no win. We're just like trying to get to a nice place of like yeah. compromise. No, absolutely. Um, So let's talk about the people who are in a marriage and a you're there the honeymoon phase is over y'all done spread out and it's like not cracked up to what you thought it was going to be mm-hmm. um and i can say this was all actuality we all have that moment where we're like ooh, listen i thought this was going to be cake and sprinkles it's and all right, kinds yeah. of things yeah. and then you're like whoa this is hard so if you guys are in that point and say your marriage is new they usually say year one three and seven are the hardest years of marriage so if you're working through these transitional phases i think i would encourage you guys to slow down and like genuinely go to the basics of like sit down next to each other, get a notepad, stare at each other's eyes and say, what are the basics that we need? What are our, you know, deal breakers? What are our, we need this to survive for love languages? What is our signal? If our love tanks are empty, like how do we generally manage this relationship? The same effort you put into your job, the same effort you put into your sports, your hobbies, you need to sit down and put very dedicated effort into your partner, into your marriage. Absolutely. And that was one of the things that, we emphasize a lot. Um, every single what month or every two months, we did like the whole love language thing. To yeah. Speak. Cause like, you know, when we first met, my love language then versus now is different, right? My love language when we first met was physical touch, and now because of the companies we run, it's now acts of service. That's number one. Mm-hmm. I haven't done it in, in in a few months or a while, so I don't know if that's still the same. But it was last time we did it, and you have to you know adapt and love your partner through it all, you know, because. We talk about, let's say, physical touch. You go from a phase where you're having sex five times a week to now one time a week because the partner's in a different mindset because they care about other things as well. And, you know, what you may be providing, you may be catering to the, the, your partner's old love language and that may not, you know, benefit him or her as much anymore. Yeah, um, I think, like like you said, you got to check in. So I can't assume. So, like, when I first met him, he physical touch and words of affirmation. affirmation. He was a yep. super, like, New York dude, like, you gotta hype me, hype up. me up. Yeah, gas me, my dirty. friends, like that. And I'm like, okay, okay, not used to this. And now it's like, I can give him all the compliments in the world, and it doesn't really phase him the same as it did. So, okay. And, and before you go, it's funny, because, like, back in the day, like, her and her family used to, like, get me gifts or, like, mm-hmm. make the bed, do laundry. I'm just like, but you didn't tell me I look good today. Or you, oh, you dead ass. You like, dead you ass. You, you didn't, he you was didn't like, tell babe, me I did a good babe, job but I, but I got a haircut today. You feel me? And I don't feel like you complimented him <laughs> that. And I'm like, okay. Now I need the bit. I need the. I need all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah, no, remember but. that one day where you literally did not talk to me because I said, oh, like, babe, like, when you getting your haircut? <laughs> yeah, bro. Yo, so this is off study, but like, I was looking crazy one day. And it wasn't like, you know, we, it wasn't like I mentioned anything about it. She came out of nowhere. I'm in the living room chilling, watching Secure the Swag on the couch, I think. And she's like, Oh yeah, babe. When are you getting a haircut? I'm just like, oh no. Okay. No, he I'm went like, off on me. I, I didn't no, go off, but I'm just like, I'm just me. like, why would you no, say that? No, he like, went okay, off on now, me. Now, now, now he I was get a like, babe, like if I don't touch my hair ever again, like it shouldn't matter to you because you should. And I was like, I didn't okay. think so. No, you went but off, I, and I literally to the point where I said I will never mention your hair again. I remember I'm you said so that, sorry. but I remember, I remember like, no, you went you, off. I remember give like saying something and like giving you like the silent treatment be like you know what i'm not i don't want to talk you <laughs> didn't talk to me for like half the day over a haircut this was like four years ago but yeah needless to say there are simple things that you will have to deal with in your marriage that you think are absolutely ridiculous but if the other person finds it important then you have to deal with it like some days i will be so upset over something and he will say no offense this is stupid and i will be like well it doesn't matter because <laughs> this is what i'm dealing with and i don't care if you feel like it's stupid you got to deal with it too because that's what, what i'm on so it really is like not picking and choosing the days that you want to be attached to someone like you're attached to this person absolutely no matter what, no matter what. and you're in it yeah and it's always like i said it's always trying to find a, a balance so the things that i may say is stupid it's like if she's crying over a friend and they got in an argument she's like who cares why, why do you need her like you don't we're, we're here me and you Laura, we're good you know what i mean so i may say that's stupid and that may not be stupid and so i gotta find a balance i'm like okay how do we work this out and yeah or you know, if he says like you're just being sensitive. It's like a trigger. It's like in Hancock when they're like, you're crazy. Yeah, I yeah. lose my mind because yeah, I'm yeah. like, what? Yeah. Um, 
But anyways, we're getting off subject. Let's yeah, go back. Yeah, for sure. No, for sure. Um, so what I'm saying is, okay, when it comes to marriage and like making things work, you need to individualize your plan. Do not go off of what the elders in the church say. Do not go off of what you see on TV because each marriage is different. My parents have been married for 37 plus years and our marriage is completely different from theirs. Now, don't get me wrong. They have a great foundation and they're a great to model after. But if I were to do every single thing that my mother told me to do in my marriage, me and Swaggy would not be married. So the issue is we tried that. Our exactly. first year and a half, and it was hell. Yeah, that was our worst we had year. A of, rough, a rough, a worst yeah. stretch of being married. And then we was like, you know what? That's when we sat down and reevaluated our whole marriage. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, what do we want? Not what yeah. do the elders want, or yeah. what would our parents be most proud of? What do we want? Yeah. And we started being more free and, and and open to each other, and 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 not just I don't know, just not doing what anybody else wanted, and we became happier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um. So like Bailey said, I, I don't I don't think anybody out there should just listen to their parents on everything that's a fact so or your friends or your cousin Answering or your couples, best like nothing just e- like even f- even even us i guess to a certain extent yeah. like, you know what i mean no like, dead ass like, follow take, what you want to do take everything with a grain of salt salt and i'm not going to tell you like oh girl you need to leave him. no none of that it's like sit down and what works for y'all works for y'all um let's talk a little bit more about like evolution because i really want to like focus on this point so this woman had a lot to say about evolution and how she was growing and a lot of women feel that way in marriages because men choose to be more stagnant now my situation is a little bit different i was a like was slash so am a very high achiever very early so by the time swaggy met me i had already done you know tv modeling campaigns i had already been on you know miss usa pageantry stuff i like was doing things that people my age couldn't dream of Absolutely. and when i met him i was tired so i was like hey listen reality tv just took me out i have all this stuff on my resume but i i need a break i need to breathe and he's like that's fine but i'm about to run it up so we had an opposite kind of effect to where i really took the back seat and i felt some type of way a lot when he was like going crazy going hard i was like hey babe like do you need me to step up more? Am I being inadequate? Like, am I not adding to, you know, the the team enough? Because I see you going so hard. And he's like, no, babe, just relax, which I felt like was amazing. But on the flip side, there's people and couples that could have easily been like, hey, yo, I'm doing all this stuff and you're just sitting at home. Absolutely. Like, how do you talk about evolution and balance in a relationship? And like I said, when I, this is a different podcast, y'all got to go watch it. But when I have 10% to give and you're pulling 90, like, how do you balance that? Yeah, I think for me it was never an option to all to ever think you were inadequate or want to leave or say I've evolved or anything like that, um, because we still had that first year and a half period of being married, yeah. and there was a time where I was down and you were paying the bills for a few months, mm-hmm. and and any other woman or most women probably out there would have probably just left and be like, you know what, this guy is, he's reading and he's studying trading, but he's not making any money or he's making a little bit of money, he's breaking even, I'm not supporting this dream. Mm-hmm. You know, and people don't notice out there, like you you had, let's say, 9,000 in your account and you like spent like 7.5K or 7,000 to fund my trading dreams. You know what I mean? Like, it's things like that. So that when that first year was over and we started making so much money, it was like, no, relax. And when we started making too much money at a certain point, like and he was like, okay, now I, I think I got to do something. I'm still telling you to relax, and I, I still to this day mean that because no amount of money I make can pay you back. Sorry, it's a freaking fly in here. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, no amount of money can pay pay you back for like you being there for me when I needed it the most, mm-hmm. right? Um, I always say that if I was single and I never met you in my life, mm-hmm. I would still be rich. It would just have been a v- very longer process. Okay, like you expedited that, like. I was rich at 25. I probably got rich at 30, 31. Mm-hmm. You know, being in Bridgeport and babysitting and trying to do all this stuff. Like, you made sure everything was good. You taught me how to be a man in general and all this other stuff. And I don't know, just a lot of things. So I feel like with people out there, it's like they evolve, but they forget where they were from. Mm-hmm. And she may have forgot where she was from at 29, where she was with her husband mm-hmm. and, and where he was at and where they've grown together. Mm-hmm. And I feel like with me and you, we've come to the point to where we've hit those goals that we set up for ourselves in our first three, four, or five days of dating. Like, this is what we want to be in an ideal scenario. Mm-hmm. It just got there differently so yeah we evolved to the point to where because you, you gotta also understand you were tired mm-hmm. because to be fair from i don't know let's say 16 to 25 or 17 mm-hmm. 25 right you were doing all these different things during that time let's for me 23 i've never been on a plane before at that time <laughs> I, i'm dead i'm dead sure i was in yeah. a hood i was just babysitting i was taking the bus and i may have been tired like that but like she's doing movies and 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 miss you know uh, Miss Missouri and Miss USA and and travel and training twenty four and I was training physically for basketball, but you were on a different level in terms of how tired you were. Mm-hmm. So when we met, 
it was just a matter of, okay, let's just go hard for one more year. And then once we make a lot of money, you relax. And now we're at the point where it's five years in and you're still relaxing, but now you kind of want to jump back into the game and stuff like that. But yeah. you've had that period. And I feel like she and other people aren't letting, giving their partner a period to figure themselves out. Yeah. Um, I also want to lean into that, especially when it comes to the like emasculating men in that way. I don't believe that it's right to emasculate men, especially when they're in a season of self-discovery. A lot of the times men don't get that opportunity to be like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I need somebody to like invest in me or fund me until I figure it out. A lot of times they're like, oh, you're a bum. You can't do that. Like, you know, a and lot of the times like people do that to men. And I'm like, no, like he's a human and he deserves to be able to figure himself out. Just like we all have that opportunity. To be fair, before you finish, there are some people out there and you've had it in your past where like they may be bummed. They may just sit on the couch and just, <laughs> I'm not, there's, a there's, a there's a possibility. There's a possibility. So I'm saying yeah, yeah. if that person is working towards something, yeah. So okay. Well, even yeah. that, if that person is working towards something, I think everybody deserves a period. Of course. Like once it gets towards, honestly, like a year, then it's like, no, we get, we need to have a discussion mm -hmm. because I've given you this time to be able to figure yourself out mm -hmm. and you haven't done anything with it. So in the meantime, get a job or do this. You can still chase those dreams, Absolutely. but I can't sit here and fund your life, you Absolutely. know, because I really was. I had mm -hmm. people that were, I was 24 taking care of like 30 plus, old, you know, older men Absolutely. where it's like, no, that's not how it works. So for me, it is like you have to have a means to an end. But I do think that it's not OK to just be like, oh, well, you're a man. You got no it's like not. men should be able to have, you know, a period to dream, too. And that kind of goes back into our other podcast in terms of mm -hmm. why women and men you know, are single and why most relationships don't work. But in terms of, you know, marriage, there's there's always something that can be better. Mm -hmm. And me and Bay have done the great part of making it work. And now to kind of segue into something else, we talk about like attraction. Like, how do you keep the attraction to your partner the same how do you keep the sex life the same yeah or know, even before baby, even after like baby. we know nothing's going to be the same like everything cannot be the same yeah. but how do you keep it alive and i think that Absolutely. like there has to be a pulse of like okay and like that goes back to communication like i know a lot of people are like communication is not sexy i just want you to throw me on a counter and blah, blah. like yeah. girl we are grown also we're not not not, not saying me and you but we're not the first year of dating anymore like you're you're in year six okay like <laughs> communicate <laughs> <You're> <laughs> no that's like, a fact talk. and even if you're like spontaneously i need you to take me at least what did great throw that in there cool. let me know what it is that you're expecting yeah. out of me so that i can know so like chris i'm not gonna get too deep but he's like hey babe like why don't you just come in the office and do this sometimes and i'm like I think okay. we, I what how, why that came up, but yeah, I think you said because when I'm in the office, I'm locked in. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm locked in. But yeah. if you did that, that'd He's be like, amazing. I would like that. I would love so that. So I'm like, you okay. Know? So I put that in the back of my mind to where uh, as I assumed, like, oh, he doesn't want to be bothered. So it's it's just communicating. And it's like, I don't want to be bothered with stupid stuff. You know what I mean? So if <laughs> not necessarily you, but you or your mom or my mom is coming in talking about the contractors for the grass, I don't care. Figure it out. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm working yeah. right now. But if you coming in trying to kiss me or talk about something like okay cool I, 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 come in you know what i mean so oh my god i'm just uh, you know no but in fact like, you, you gotta know your partner and you gotta really talk about it and for some people like i have a friend who is like i really don't like having sex like that but like my man does so i do it for him and i'm like okay well let's let's back into this because i don't want you to be trapped in a situation where you're not enjoying it but at the same time it is good for you to be aware that like this is something that he likes and that's something that is important to our marriage so you just have to find the balance for you nobody's saying you got to be like rabbits and ha have it scheduled you know three times a no, day not at all but at the same time i don't think it's fair to neglect a partner um physically in any way shape or form especially if you know that is their love language or something that they require and let's talk about that of making it work too because I want you to answer this question truthfully, too, honestly. <laughs> like, honestly. Um, okay. And maybe the math may be too much. Let's just say in, in a month, right? Okay. So we got to a point, right? My love language was physical touch okay. my first year and a half. So like you said, rabbit, yeah, whatever, whatever, cool. The year, the first year I made, let's say, five or six million dollars. Tell the audience out there how often we had sex in a month. It was crickets, y'all. Like, no, honestly, it was crickets. We got to the point where I had to come in the office and be like, hey, babe, it's been a month. So I don't know what we're doing. And he goes, oh, oh, it has? I didn't even Crazy. think about it, babe, because, you know, my energy has been going into the da 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 da, -da. Yeah, And I've just exactly. been so locked in. And I'm like, well, lock out. Let's, yeah. let's go. And, and it's not even like I was unattracted or nothing. It was just like when you go from making nothing to millions, it was just like all my energy was into that to the point I actually forgot about having sex. And then remember the first time we had sex in a while, I was like, 
Oh, oh this, this is amazing. Nice. Yeah, he I'm was like, like, oh, what am oh, I doing? I'm I forgot. Perfect. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you remember that, right? I was like, well, I, I, like, what I, am I, doing? I didn't forget. Yeah. But also, too, I don't think people talk about like the mind games of the up and downs of like. So for me, like I'm a woman, um, I'm an attractive woman. And at the time when we met, I was like, like I said, a model, a pageant girl. So a lot of emphasis is pay- placed on my beauty. So a lot of my value was coming from my beauty. So then it's like, oh yeah, he wants to have sex with me all the time. Then we go into a few mar- uh, a few years of marriage and he's locked in on work and then he doesn't want to have sex with me. So then I'm like, oh God, am I ugly? Wrong, is yeah, he over yeah, me? Yeah, is yeah. it like, so then you have to kind of do that work of like diving deep of like, okay, Bailey, why do you have so much value placed into your physical appearance or whatever? And then it's like, oh, well, I guess since I was young, I was taught that I was going to be a trophy and this is and that. Then I'm like, let's unwork that. So then he had to go through the phase of unworking working that with me and there's just so many things that come with it of like you don't expect that to happen not at all you don't expect it to happen at all and you know I, I think every partner has their own discovery phase but couples have their discovery phase as well and we don't got to get into this in a whole other podcast but me and you had yeah. a discovery phase and that's the one thing i don't like is that there's a podcast out there um i'll say the name shan Pujan's podcast yeah, and yeah. the title is so oh, yeah. clickbaity it was, it was clickbait. because there was nothing a part of us that needed saving or was broken yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it was just a self-discovery phase we we're trying to figure out yeah. what else could enhance work yeah. yada yada but like the title being could this save our marriage like we had to yeah, text yeah. him like yo this this is not what we discussed yeah, like, what are yeah, you talking yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah, so yeah. that's that's one thing i don't like some of our friends may see that we'll talk about it in another podcast but yeah. I have to mention that and as that well. conversation we're also really open about the conversation itself was not a bad conversation at all it was just a little bit of a misleading um title and then as time went on, I, my energy changed. People say my body language because yada, yada, yada. No, my energy changed because as time went on, I saw the interview was going. And it was a little bit different because we thought it would be a bunch of topics instead of just one topic. Neither here nor there. But another, another conversation. Sorry. Well, you got to segue it back in. No, okay. Was, but I'm, was... I'm, I'm, I'm just saying because a, a couple's, you know, go through a self-discovery phase, you know? Yeah, so, and you should have the freedom to you, do that. Yeah, you have the freedom to do that. Don't let anybody make you feel weird for going through the self-discovery phase. And I'm not ooh, saying ooh, this person ooh, did, I go got something to say. Go okay, ahead. guys, go this is so important. <laughs> I want to put this out there. I really think couples should stop making other couples feel bad for their primal instincts. So that self-discovery phase that he was talking about, I had me as the wife, which is like kind of taboo. I had a phase where I was like, hey, I'm having these feelings that I haven't felt in a long time. I don't know what to do with them. And instead of him being like, oh God, don't feel that way. This is terrible. He said, well, babe, let's talk about him. And so that is what led to us having these open discussions about what could possibly work for our marriage or how we, we feel. Let me give them an example just so they know what to go off of, I guess. Oh, I used to date girls in college and I was watching a TV show called The Sex Life of College Girls. And then there was this girl that was like hooking up with this other girl. And I was like, oh, my God, I should have done that more in college. And then I was like, that's a weird thought. So I told him, I was like, babe, like, I just thought about this. And then we talked about it. And so he was like, well, what does that look like for you? And then we just talked. Like, Whereas, he didn't make me feel bad of like, well, you're a married woman and you shouldn't even have those thoughts. I feel like couples actually do that out there. No, I know for like, a fact. Yeah. And I was nervous because like you come into a marriage and you're like, I want him to think I'm perfect. I don't want him to think there's anything wrong with me. So then you hide these natural things. And it's like for guys, um, this is not something like this is not something that's yeah. what i want to do yeah. but like some guys are like i want a golden shower okay oh yeah no hell no yeah i don't even yeah <laughs> right mm-hmm. but then they're not comfortable sharing with their partner so they go and they find a prostitute or somebody else to do it and then now they have this big deep dark secret was that in a show we saw yeah wait, this, is, oh, sorry, I, this is not a real person uh, no, I'm gonna be saying, you know so then they have this big dark deep secret and then it's ruining their marriage over something that you could have just said like maybe she wanted to pee on you shoot like you don't know like you just have to be open and i feel like people should be able to have these desires and even if it's something where you're like oh no babe i'm actually not open to that but maybe i'll do it for your birthday or once a year you can at least like compromise yeah and i feel like a lot of guys out there you know this is why a lot of you know, guys are loving Andrew Tate because he's trying to talk for most of the guys out there. And there's <laughs> some guys the out majority. there who, who, like, I know people who we're friends with, who yeah. we're on TV with, who t- would tell me Ooh. in private conversation, would say flat out, bro, I love my girl. I would love to make her my wife. But is it wrong if I want to have sex with another girl once a year or mm-hmm. get a hall pass? Like a hall pass. And if I can't get that from her, I'm going to cheat and I can't stop myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better to have that conversation with the person, but they know the partner's going to yeah. break up with them, yell at them, or as opposed or to Or their feelings are going to be hurt. That's but here's it. the thing it's like, there's times that where this man has hurt my feelings and I'm like, that doesn't feel good, but I'm so happy that he came to me and told me and there's vice versa where I know the things that I've said to him don't feel good as a husband or a man. But if I don't say it to him, then I'm not being completely honest and I don't want a marriage where there's secrets. Yeah. So I, like, 
Yeah, and also, cut the fairy tale stuff out. Like this too. is a real partnership, yeah. but you need to know what you're dealing with. But to be fair, I do like to play devil's advocate. I do understand that people need to feel more secure. Yeah. So I feel like maybe if all this would happen in our first year of marriage, just being open about everything and talking, <laughs> we tried, but like it was a lot of arguments and trying to live like your parents, yada yada. But like as we became more secure, I became more secure in my career. You became more secure as a wife, and now you're a mother and stuff. Now it's like we can talk about anything on the planet Earth Very and true. figure it out. But even when we had these conversations early, he would actually communicate even then. I'm like, hey, babe, this is an idea, and I'm not open to right now. But like, give me like a year or two, and maybe like I'll warm up to it. <laughs> like he would say that. And I I'm definitely like, would okay. Say that. So I'd be like, all right, well, let me wait my year or two, and then I'll bring it back up. And like we just had this communication of like, you know what, like. He, we're human. We're not going to be perfect. I don't want things to be perfect, but I really want at least like a partner where I can like figure these things out with. Absolutely. And I yeah. feel like uh, the girl that we just saw on Twitter, a lot of girls are, out, are like her out there in the world and they don't let their partner grow with them mm -hmm. or grow at their speed or, you know, just have But patience. vice versa, same to men. Vice versa. Y'all yeah. got to stop controlling y'all women. There's a lot of men that are open minded and I appreciate them. I feel like all the men in my life are open minded and not like like male chauvinist but there's a lot of men that have these old-fashioned tradition yeah well a majority I, I don't know it because you know i don't like i don't deal with those people mm -hmm. but there's a lot of men that have these old-fashioned ways to where they're like oh this is my woman this is my property she's gonna do what i want her to do and then you end up in situations where i think people think like oh only men cheat nah <laughs> women be out here cheating they know. just a lot better at it than y'all yeah, are because they really have to like they think about it so don't put yourself in a situation to where you're like mind blown because the person that you thought was yours is actually out here getting like they don't feel comfortable with you they don't feel safe there's not an environment where they can share their thoughts with you so they have to go somewhere else or a lot of women are turning lesbian shout out to them because they're not getting what they need from their male partners so i yeah. just really think like there needs to be a, a conversation like an open conversation and a dialogue with everybody yeah and last thing i'll say is that there's a reason why if you don't have that space there's a reason why when girls uh, get a guy's phone. The first thing they check is the male group chat because they're just sharing all their thoughts <laughs> their there. Deep thought or if secrets, a guy yeah. gets a girl's phone, she's checking Ooh, their, their wait best a friends. Because, there was a TikTok. You know we mean? gotta find it. There's a TikTok where a dude was like, "Hey, like unpopular opinion, but there's a lot of male men who are straight that don't like women." And everybody's like, "What?" And he's like, "And I'm not saying that they're not gay, but I've had conversations like in locker rooms where they're like, what do you want out of a woman?' And then they're like, "Oh, their bodies.'" And he's like, "Besides their bodies, what do you want?" And they're like. I don't know. Absolutely. Like men do, you know, like they would rather chat with their friends or be open Absolutely. or vulnerable with their friends. And they just think of women as an accessory or as a body part where it's like, y'all got to fix that. Like why do men, straight men not have a connection or a friendship or a value for women? Like that's not okay either. Yeah. So I just feel like uh, both parties need to create a safe environment and make it work so that you can talk to each yeah. other about anything. Cause what you don't want is, for your spouse to talk to her girl best friend about her secrets and she can't tell you or the male to talk to his guy best friend about what he wants mm -hmm. to do what he's doing and can't tell his wife and then like you said like all the extra stuff that can come out and it's like now everything blows up in your face so exactly um and this this will we'll have to probably do a part two because marriage is like very complicated yeah, it's long. we can't really like nail it down into this but i would gen genuinely say like take marriage seriously it's not a key key it's not a check off your list it's not like oh by this time i need to be married um no like this is a real life partnership you need to be dedicated and you really need to like think about it before you do it if you have a doubt if you should get married to somebody then don't absolutely real talk and uh if you're somebody who is single and it's another conversation for another day but if you're <laughs> single and you want to work on yourself first and then get married after absolutely do, do that. that do yeah. that as well so yeah because you this is the last thing because that girl first of all her confidence wasn't high enough when she got married because me myself if i know in five years i'm a level up and i'm gonna be this boss person i'm gonna wait for five years because Absolutely. the person that i want to be married to is already on that caliber like my dad was like hey go to college put your head down and when you look up in four years then you can look around for a husband and it was very like true of like the no offense but the bums that are coming in freshman year yeah. i ain't trying to attach myself to them Absolutely. let me wait until we have actually seasoned you know so just be real with yourself don't there's no timeline screw the timeline and just focus on your individual journey yeah and you can't look at us as anomalies whether it is financially or marriage wise so we got married at 23 we made money at 25 like yeah the average 25 year old is not making over 100k so don't <laughs> expect them to no. or, or look at somebody on instagram who's doing that and expect that out of your partner let them grow make it work and as time goes on it'll work we got to end the podcast, y'all, but there's so many things there's I want so to say because we yeah, didn't yeah, even yeah. touch on, like, kids and the dynamics of marriage. We didn't even touch on, like, actually, like, sex. and the, Like, there's so many things. We'll but 
part soon. one part one part two will come um but make sure you drop your comments below and you guys really talk to us about what's going on if y'all are married or you're about to get married and y'all have some some things y'all want us to talk through write us something anonymously we'll take your name out of it and we'll talk about it on the podcast absolutely guys we'll see you guys for part two real soon later